the heading is second derivative. Um, you know what a derivative is, right? So there's this process of differentiation. So you have a function. Uh, you have a function, right? And the process of differentiation, that's what gives us a derivative, right? And if I'm calling the function f, then I would normally call the derivative f dash. That would be my ordinary notation for that, right? So function, you differentiate once, and that gives you a derivative. But this process here of differentiating, you can do it as many times as you like to anything you like. So if I were to do it again, right, to differentiate a second time, then what you get is, well, another derivative. But this time, what you're getting over here is the derivative of the derivative. Now that's a bit awkward to say, derivative of the derivative. So rather than calling it that, being that you got this derivative first, and then you get this one second, right? We call this guy the first derivative. Okay, so from now on, uh, rather than just saying the derivative, I'm gonna generally say the first derivative. And then this one which you get after is called the second one, the second derivative. Now, carrying on this notation here, right? The dash indicates, <coughs> excuse me, the dash indicates I have differentiated once, okay? So therefore, if I differentiate again, I'll just slap another dash on there, right? Now, you can see, even though in practice, you more or less will never have to differentiate more than twice, okay, in practice. Um, you can see, though, that this kind of notation, it's starting to, um, it's starting to struggle in terms of its flexibility, good morning, and versatility, because like, do I have to add however many dashes that I want? Um, and sometimes we want to talk about just whichever derivative you want, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, nth derivative, right? So in this context, rather than just simply adding dashes, sometimes you will see, instead of that right, way of writing it, you'll see the f, and in brackets, <coughs> they'll put a number up there, like two for second. And that indicates, all right, I've differentiated it twice. If you've got a three in brackets up there, you've differentiated three times. Not complicated, okay? So, function, first derivative, second derivative, okay? Now, I'm just gonna leave it as an open question that we know the first derivative, what it tells us about the function is it tells us about gradient. In fact, that's how we defined the derivative, right? The derivative is all about that first principles. It's just rise over run. That's all it is. Good morning. So therefore, we also call this the gradient function. The first derivative tells you about the gradient of this function. Now, just for now, because I want you to actually think about it, um, I want you to therefore turn your mind, well, <coughs> if this tells me about the gradient of this, what does this tell me about? Like, this is the geometrical applications of calculus. That's where we're heading. I don't want to spoil it yet, because actually, the fruit of, um, like, how learning happens is by your brain working on something and turning it around your head. I'll give you an answer eventually, but if I give you the answer right now, you actually get less of an opportunity to think about it. So I want you to think about it, and I'm deliberately going to leave this blank, and we will come to what it is. We'll define it very shortly, okay? But you just have to think about it. Now, before we just start computing some, really simply, um, this is the notation which you will see probably most frequently, but it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. Um, it's, a, it's not very descriptive, and also, as I've mentioned before, that dash often just, like, you, you don't see it there, or you just mistake it for something else. So here's the way that I prefer to write it, and you'll see this notation just as often, okay? Functions, we often say, well, I'm gonna call my function y rather than f. Right, like y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. In fact, we've seen this a lot before we met this function notation. We know that since we're taking the gradient, right, we're going to think about rise over run. So again, if I differentiate, I get dy over dx. And I read that, I read that as rise over run. Okay, rise over run. Now, that's the change in y, which is rise. That's the change in x. But you can see, I can use this notation to show this process of differentiating really was take the y and slap this guy on the front, right? You remember we talked about this? It's been a while, so that's why I'm sort of treating it as new. We call this guy the differential operator. It means take whatever that is, right, 
and see how it's changing with regard to x. And you can do that for anything. You can do it for anything. For instance, um, here is a function, right? This is the function for the area of a circle. I'm calling, I'm naming my function a, right? Well, I can think about how does a change as the radius changes. That's all it means, right? How are they changing in comparison to each other? How's y changing in comparison to x? We call that gradient, okay? So being that, good morning. Being that, this differential operator is what we slap in front of something every time we differentiate. When I go from the first derivative, dy and dx, to the next one, <clears throat> this guy is the derivative of this guy, right? So it's d on dx of dy on dx. Do, do you see that? Like, that's all I've done. I said, that means differentiate whatever you've got in front. So really, there actually should be, you know, there should be something in there. But the something has changed. This time, what I differentiated was y, so dy on dx. But now I'm differentiating something else. Now, just like saying the derivative of the derivative, which, by the way, is exactly what this notation indicates, just like that's a bit of a mouthful, this is also a bit of a mouthful. So mathematicians have said, well, hold on a second. I've got dx on dx, right? Sorry, an on dx and another on dx. So I've got, I've got two of them there, right? I could just say I have two of them multiplied together. Like, they actually can be dealt with kind of as fractions, and we saw that when we had a look at limits, right? So this d on dx is not just some random operator. It's not just a fraction because I wanted it to be a fraction. It's because gradient gives you a fraction. It's a ratio, okay? So that's what I have on the bottom. There are two dx's, so it's squared. Up on the top, I have two of something else, but it's not dy's. Y doesn't appear twice, does it? Y only appears once. What does appear twice? D. It's the D. It's the, it's the differential part of it, right? So we say, well, there's two of those, and there's a Y, right? So this is another piece of notation you will see that indicates the second derivative. And I kind of prefer this one in the same way that I prefer this to this. It's kind of more descriptive. 